Okay, welcome to the last presentation on development. Um, in this section, you are going to be looking at um, Sigmund Freud and his theories in terms of development. It is a part of chapter um, 10 in the textbook. So the reading can be found on page 480 to 483. Um, in your note packet, you're going to be filling out pages 17 and 18. Big ideas we're going to learn here is just the basics of Sigmund Freud, um, his idea of the id, the ego, and the superego, and his sexual, um, psychosexual stages of development. So, first thing that we're going to talk about is, in general, what is consciousness? Consciousness can't be seen, it can't be touched. Um, it's the awareness of oneself or the possibility of actually just knowing um, what is happening inside or outside of an organism. So, you're all conscious right now. You're listening to me. You're aware. You're alert. Okay? It is the state of being aware. Preconscious is the stuff right below the surface. Um, it resides just below the level of consciousness. You have this information that's there, you're just not using it. Um, so you have thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that are present, but it's not always in our current um, awareness. So examples could be if I had you guys um, tell me your phone numbers or your address. Now you're thinking of it and it's not in your current consciousness, but you're not always thinking of it, so it's just below the surface. That would be a good example of pre-conscious. And then you have unconsciousness. A dictionary might define the term as being um, a loss of conscious in total, like when a person faints. However, in psychology, your unconscious are your desires, your wish, your motives, stuff that drives you. Okay, it's absent from your conscious awareness, but it still influences your thoughts. So it's kind of like I was talking about in the beginning of the year. It's at the bottom of the iceberg. still drives a lot of your actions or your behavior. So um, Freud kind of looked at our personality, kind of comes um, out of understanding one's consciousness, pre-consciousness, and unconsciousness. So here it is again. The consciousness is that iceberg above the surface. Okay, things that you're aware of. Um, me talking right now. Preconscious are things that um, we can be aware of when we think of them. So if I asked you guys to tell me um, the stages of Piaget, some pigs can fly. You probably could be sensory, motor, pre-operational, concrete, formal. If you if you thought about them, they would come into your mind. And then your unconscious is all that iceberg way below the surface. Notice how you have a ton of this stuff that's way below the surface. And you have a little bit of iceberg above the surface of your conscious awareness. Um, it's the deep hidden reservoir that holds the true us. Um, it's our desires and our fears. A lot of what really drives our behaviors. Terms you do need to know that are associated with Freud. Um, it's free association. This was a technique or a way to assess the unconscious. Um, so Freud would have, um, there's his famous chair. He was the person that came up with talk therapy. He said, kind of sit down in my chair. Let's talk about how you're feeling. Why do you feel this way? He tried to dig at that unconscious that was way below the surface. Now some people state that we should stay away from the surface. If people are fine, don't go digging and prodding at it. But Freud believes this is, can kind of um, help people grow and mature. Um, once your memories were freed and relieved, 
one would actually feel better. Um, this is known as psychoanalysis. The thoughts and actions in our unconscious motives and conflicts can impact our personality and who we are today. So if we understand them, we, more, we might be better at understanding ourselves. Okay, another thing that, that we're going to talk about is Freudian slips. Um, sometimes our, our unconsciousness, our, our unconscious thoughts accidentally slip into our consciousness. So it's something that, you know, ac we accidentally state, okay, because it's kind of occurring in our unconscious nature, and then it all of a sudden slips into our consciousness. So as if I maybe saw the word um, cones, and then all of a sudden was thinking about or stated instead of just saying cones, I said ice cream cones because it was something that I maybe my unconscious was really bothered or thinking about. And then I kind of had this, oops, Freudian slip. And we'll talk about more of the examples of these in class. Another thing that Freud came up with was the dream um, theory. One of the theories of dreams, why we dream. Um, Freud believed that it was an opportunity to just discharge our unconscious wants and desires. So we have all these unconscious things that are occurring in the um, iceberg underneath, and sometimes we don't have an opportunity to kind of discharge them. So Freud believes that we do it in our dreams. So a lot of our dreams have um, underlining meanings. Okay, the manifest is the dream storyline. Okay, so let's say I have a story of a, I keep having the story of this dog licking my face. Okay, the, the storyline is going to be kind of like that manifest content. And the latent is going to be the symbolic meaning. Why? What is the meaning of this dog keep, keeps licking my face? Maybe Freud would think something like, well, maybe I don't feel loved um, or I don't feel accepted. Despite his theories, there is no solid evidence to support this. Um, it is a interpretation. It's kind of like an understanding, a theory that's out there. But there's nothing that proves this to be true. Another term to know is often Freud believes that we repress um, some of our, um, our unwanted thoughts. So repress is to suppress the thoughts, feelings, or our memories that are too painful. We'll just leave them above the, the underneath the surface. We don't want to talk about it. It's so embarrassing. We'll just leave them down there. Um, and that's why he believes talk therapy is good because we're releasing those, those painful things. Okay, so Freud's structure of personality. Personality is fully developed by the age of six, but we continue to refine and expand our basic personality structure through the lifespan. So kind of looking at development, when does our personality really develop? Freud believed that the personality consists of three parts. Okay, which pull an individual in different directions, creating a conflict. Okay, this is called the id, the ego, or the superego. How we resolve the conflicts determines our behaviors and shapes our personality. First thing we have is the id. It is something that we're born with. The id is a concept and it re represents our innate biological needs. Okay, so I have my id. My id is the one that um, causes me to be hungry, causes thirst, causes sleep, and it's our sexual drive. Okay, These are the things that we want. We want from when we're infants, we want that pleasure met. Okay, The id is described as a force which is demanding, impulsive, irrational, and extremely selfish. It operates on I want to be pleased. So I want to eat, I want to eat, I want to eat. I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Okay, if our behavior was completely controlled by our id, we would have to have all our own way all the time. Okay, so think about a newborn baby. If that's the only thing that we had was the id and we never created anything else, we'd be going around crying all the time to be, um, to be, to be pleased, essentially. Freud believes that a newborn baby behavior is completely dominated by the id. They want everything immediately and they must have their needs met. Some more stuff with the id. It exists entirely in our unconscious awareness. It's entirely underneath the iceberg. So we are never really aware of it. Our hidden true, these are kind of like the animalistic wants and desires. It works on the pleasure principle, which we want to avoid pain and receive instant gratification. 
Okay, so think about those egocentric kids. They just want this id met. Then you develop the, the ego, and this pretty much develops, I would say, about the ages of three. Um, when we're starting to un understand a little bit about reality, you're not the only person in existence. The ego develops gradually when children begin to understand more about how the real world operates. Okay, so we think about the theory of mind when you start understanding that there's other people in reality. Um, it's a part of the personality which is realistic, logical, and orderly. You're understanding that you're not the only one here. It operates on the reality principle. Okay, It tries to ensure that the needs of the ids are met, but in a socially acceptable way that's appropriate. So you can't just scream okay, in the middle of a grocery store if you want a candy bar anymore. You need to understand that there's a little bit with reality with this situation. Therefore, the ego considers real life restrictions in dealing with the id. Okay, so here you have that id totally underneath the surface. You have the ego that's rising a little bit, taking part of your, you're conscious of it. Okay, you can't be screaming in public all the time, but sometimes it's a little bit below the surface. And then the last one, you could see the super ego. It's pretty much all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top of our awareness. Okay, a little bit more with the ego. The ego develops after the id. It works on the reality principle. It um, negotiates between the id and your environment. Okay, in our conscious and unconscious minds. And it is what everyone sees as our personality. So it's kind of like the thing in the middle. Okay, then you have your superego. Superego is our conscious. It's always looking after us. It's judging us. It's helping us understand our morals and our values. So I always kind of think of the id is the devil on the shoulder. The superego is the angel. And then you're trying to make the decision, the ego in the middle. Okay, it operates on the moral principle, what is right from wrong. Okay, um, the process of identification is the process in which you start to take your parents' values in the development of this. Okay, it gives this feeling of guilt for negative behavior, pride for positive behavior. Okay, you're always trying to get perfection. Superego's main function is to block the id and persuade the ego to make a more moralistic decision. Okay, so you can't scream and cry anymore, little Johnny in the middle of the floor, because you want to make sure that your mommy isn't embarrassed, and you want to make sure that you're acting appropriately, so don't be on the floor, and then the ego would kind of balance that out. Okay, um, it's the last stage to develop here, and it, it develops at about the age of five. Right? Remember, there's a little bit of wiggle room here, maybe it's developing later. It is our conscious. Um, what we think of the difference between right and wrong, the ego often has to mediate between the superego and the id. Ah, uh, angel on my shoulder. Okay. Next thing Freud begins to talk about is um, the psychosexual stages of development. Freud believes that our personality forms during the first few years. He concluded that children pass through stages known as the psychosexual stages of development in which the id wants to be pleasured, 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 and focuses on distinct pleasure areas, and these areas are called erogenous zones. Erogenous zones are pleasure zones, such as the mouth, the anus, and the genital regions. We're going to do whatever we can to get that region or get that stimulation fulfilled. Okay, If we're overindulged in something um, or if we're frustrated because we're not having that need met, it can cause, cause a fixation. Okay, or us to kind of feel stuck in a certain area. Okay, so his psychosexual stages of development um, consists of five stages that you need to know. Um, each of the stages has um, a situation where you can have a fixation uh, in that, that stage where you can um, have way too much kind of cuddling or way too much um, exposure to that stage or you can have not enough, which can cause you to have certain personality traits. So the first one is 0 to 18 months, and your um, it is called the oral stage because everything is kind of wrapped around your mouth in terms of toys and hands and sucking on food. Okay, You can either be overexposed, where you have way too much, uh, maybe you have a pacifier or the bottle, and this can lead to you being gullible and optimistic. You can also have maybe not enough, okay, and you lack that, maybe that food that you needed. Um, 
and that could lead for you to be suspicious and envious. Anal stage is from about 18 months to 3 years old, and you are learning how to potty train. So you're learning how to kind of you're in control of getting rid of that waste. Whether you want the waste to go in the diaper or you want the waste to maybe go in the toilet. Um, if you are, if you're one that um, kind of lacks a lot of control here and you get frustrated when you're going to the bathroom, this can lead to an anal expulsive character where you're really messy, disorganized, um, and reckless. Um, maybe you're the type of kid that went, it has to go right after they just asked you. Um, that's kind of, could lead to this. Uh, you also could be overindulgent, way too tidy, way too clean, way too protective in terms of going to the bathroom. You're going to have an anal retentive character where you're neat, you're careful, and you're withholding sometimes maybe going to the bathroom. So the phallic stage happens from about three to five, and this is when little kids, three to five year olds, start to understand um, their genitals. So little boys have a penis and the little girls have a vagina. Okay, they notice that there's someone different than if they have a little brother or sister um, or maybe their mom. They notice something is different um, than themselves. Okay, if they're overexposed to this, okay, if they're overindulgent in this kind of understanding, they can be kind of um, reckless in love, um, overly indulgent in love. When you're older, you may have a personality to love everybody. You can't control your kind of your sexual urges. However, if you struggle on this stage, he says that you may be unsure about love. Okay. Another thing that happens in this stage is what's known as the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex. The Oedipus complex happens for little boys. Boys begin to have a huge bond with their mother. They had a bond because they breastfed from her before. She's a lot of the times the primary caregiver. Pretty much idolizes her. Parallel to this, boys begin to identify with the father. The figure, parallel to him in terms, is the biological sex. So he knows that his mother is different from him. He knows his father is the same. He begins to get really jealous of his dad okay and maybe some people think that this is like the animal animalistic instinct that we you know are, are searching for our prey you know that's kind of a little bit bizarre okay but the dad is essentially a threat to him because he wants to be with his mom okay at the end of the stage the little boys stop kind of obsessing about their mom okay and they end up repressing those thoughts and they begin to have a strong bond with their father because of castration they don't want to be left off okay by themselves they fear like that if they you know um, oppose their father then their father is going to kind of like throw them out of the house so they'd rather be kind of one with daddy okay and maybe repress the thoughts about mom and then kind of become friends with daddy all right this isn't a little kid becoming you know crazy sexually like having fantasies about his mom Okay, this is just that he really wants to hang out with her. He wants to be with her. Okay, then you have the Electra complex. So what about girls? During the phallic stage, the daughter becomes attached to her father. She becomes more like kind of obsessed with her dad because her dad's different. Daddy's girl. She comes more hostile towards her mother. mother. She doesn't want her mom to sit by her dad. She wants to sit on daddy's lap. She believes that maybe her mom is responsible for her not having a penis, okay? Um, this is due mostly to the idea that the girl is envious of her father, and she has what's called penis envy, okay? She wants one. This leads to resentment towards her mother, um, who, gir who the girl believes causes her castration, okay? And then see... And then again, you see that her she doesn't want her mom to castrate her and leave her, so she begins to be one with the mom. Okay, so going on to the next stage then is latency. Latency happens from about six to twelve years old. This is where Freud believes all sexual activity is pretty much suppressed. Your super ego is beginning to develop. Your morals, okay, you're becoming to understand that you can't. You know, um, be kind of climbing all over mom that you need to kind of understand that dad's in the picture too. And you can't always get what you want. Okay. Your sexual drives kind of lie dormant for a while. And a lot of your focus is um, on 
school sports, and same-sex relationships. So you're hanging out with your buddies and your friends, and girls are girls, or boys are girls. Okay, and then the last stage is the genital stage. This is pretty much from puberty and beyond. This is when you begin to notice other boys or other girls. Your genitals are beginning to develop. You may have your first orgasm. Um, it's really focused on reproduction at this point in time. You're less um, having unresolved conflict and more issues are trying to figure out love and relationships. Okay, so to recap, this was kind of how um, Sigmund Freud came into play here. His ideas on um, personality development in your um, childhood development all the way up to adolescence. Uh, he looked at the id, the ego, and the superego. He looked at the psychosexual stages of development.